Hey you guys, guess who I am? Hi everyone, it's Sam here with 50 seconds of shade and some Pokemons. And Valentina is gone and I haven't been this happy ever. I'm still not happy because, you know, depression, but whatever, who cares. Valentina is gone, hilarious. One of the funniest lip syncs I've ever seen because Despite the fact that she was sure that she was in the bottom two, she still spent the two and a half hours that she had backstage during Untuck listening to none of the music. Because what? Valentina wanted to go home. Let's talk about why. Think about the queens over the course of RuPaul's Drag Race that have gotten really, really popular despite the fact that they didn't win. We're talking about queens like Detox. We're talking about queens like Willem. We're talking about queens like Latrice Royale. We're talking about Trixie Mattel, Katya. What do all of these queens have in common? They were the victims of shocking eliminations. Shocking. The thing about it is, is that this will be the most talked about moment of the season and Valentina will become even more popular because of it. She will make hundreds of thousands more dollars not having won vis-a-vis -vis this shocking elimination and pretending to not know the words, she knew them. Then she would have just sort of become like winning like everyone expected her to and then uh, like disappearing into nowhere like, I don't know, Sharon Needles? that bitch. But anyways, let's talk about the challenges. So the challenge this week was to create like a television pilot and it was interesting to me that Valentina was basically making all of these creative decisions that would ultimately land her in the bottom. It just seemed like a very well-designed self-implosion. There's never been an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race wherein a queen has been like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, do it on the fly and it's gone well. It's just never happened. So. I knew that Nina and Valentina were going to be in the bottom. I mean, we all knew that they were going to be in the bottom anywhere because, you know, we all heard the rumors. I personally thought that Shay and Sasha had the best pilot. I thought the cliffhangers line alone should have netted them the win. I loved how Sasha did like a parody of herself as a club kid with her makeup. I loved the eyebrows. I loved the dress. It was all very bright. I don't know that gown length is exactly club kid, but you know, I'll give it to her because it was such a cute concept. Shay, I didn't love immediately when she came out, but then while she was sitting in the and tuck lounge and I'm looking at all the detail all over her, I really, really ended up loving it. Shay is the kind of queen that centers everything right here because everything south of her waist is always nothing. It's nothing. But I think that's very smart and that's what you want to do as a drag queen trying to brand yourself. You're trying to put it all up here. Then there was Peppermint, Trinity, and Alexis. I thought they all did pretty good with their pilot. The only problem was that I thought that Trinity was a little bit overpraised and Alexis was a little bit too smacked down and I'm defending Alexis so you know that it's gotta be some bullshit. I do have to say, I think that Peppermint had the strongest look on the runway and could have won the challenge again had cliffhangers not happened. Peppermint just had like one of the most iconic looks of the season, like coming out as a f Peppermint. Like, that's friggin' genius. She just commanded that stage. You could not look at anyone else. Trinity, I thought, was a little overpraised again. And I think that her costume was a little overpraised too. A litter. Litter box. You know, she was funny enough. She made me giggle, which, you know, hard to do with those kind of skits. And then finally, there was Alexis, who should have been on the bottom too for that. Horrible. Body suit. Gross. Oh god, it's weird. The makeup was fabulous, but I don't know. There's just She just doesn't understand style. I don't know anything about Alexis as a drag queen from a style perspective. I know that she's really self-defensive, and that's about it. So that's not even a style thing. And then it came down to Nina and Valentina. Valentina, again, like that mask was totally incongruous. I think that she could have put that mask on for anything and could have sold it with like any of the looks that she presented this season. I'm sure she had like a bundle of them. I just, I really think that she had this whole thing masterminded in her head. And again, it worked. She was a fan favorite because they had this massive dramatic moment of sending the front runner home. It just seems so calculated to me. The look was nothing to gag over, frankly. Lena Monina, amazing face yet again. I loved her outfit. I just, I wish that this had been a little bit more done and I know that she said she didn't have enough time, but if that's like a consistent theme within your work is that you don't have enough time to finish it, you really have to start thinking through how you're going to fix that because otherwise you're just gonna keep ending up in the bottom and then eventually they're gonna send you home. Anyways, uh, then that lip thing happened and I mean, it was hilarious. It was a jaw-dropping moment of drums. I just really wonder how it's gonna work out for her in the long run. I wonder if when she comes back for All Stars 3, because you know she will, Rue will hold that against her or use it as part of like a storyline to like bolster her to the win. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this week. Tell me how you feel about Valentina going home. You know how I feel.
my icy part is, is worn just a bit. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe, shade. Valentina's gone. I don't have to watch her sociopathic Linda Evangelista smile anymore. All right, bye.